Hi guys, and welcome back. Okay, so we're just going to go through the rest of our user interface here. We've got, um, we've gone through the the whole top section here. I'm just going to get rid of our media window just by clicking on that media button again, just to make our arrangement window a bit bigger. So I'm just going to go through the 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 parts that we need to know then for this window. So we've got this um, little walking man here, which is quite useful. So if your track is playing, and this walking man isn't on. Sorry, I'm just going to demonstrate this. The marker, they will actually uh, just go off screen and you'll have to go and find it yourself. Um, if you click on this walking man, it'll flick to wherever that is. And every time it gets to the end of a window, it'll flick onwards so that it constantly follows it. And then we've got the standard sort of edit. Um, we've got track uh, selection here for adding new tracks, um, deleting tracks, uh, renaming tracks. Um, then we've got a region section for, again, um, working with the, uh, the lubricators. So you can copy, you can cut, you can insert all the usual controls that are at the top of your um, selection here as well. And we've got some MIDI controls here with some uh, handy sort of splitting um, functions and that can be useful. Um, later on, we'll be we'll probably be using the split function that allows you to separate out your MIDI parts. Um, we've got a, an audio section again, um, which allows you, if you've got selected on audio part, you can do different uh, effects and um, functions on that. To there's a detect tempo, things like that. But again, we we're not going to be using that um, for the this particular course. We then got a view section, which allows you to view different um, uh, sections of your window. But again, we're just going to leave that as is. We've got a snap section here, which um, basically when you're moving this your parts around, you need to be able to snap it. Otherwise, it's going to, going to constantly be out of time because everything works on a 4-4 a four -four basis and it works to a beat and to a bar. So your snap needs to be snapping to something. You can set it to bar, which means it'll snap between bar one and two. As you can see there, or you can set it to, for example, um, beat, which it'll snap to every beat in between each bar. And there's a whole list of um, different ones that you can use. And keeping it on smart is probably the best because it adapts to depending on how zoomed in or zoomed out you are on your actual uh, arrangement window. We've then got some drag functions, um, which basically if you've got your drag function on overlap, then your parts will actually just overlap and delete out sections from the part that you drop it on top of. If you set it to crossfade, if it's audio, it will crossfade between the two. If you set it to shuffle right or shuffle left, it'll actually swap the parts apart or the swap, swap the parts about. And then there's some handy functions here. These last two are pretty good. Um, the first one is what your cursor is currently doing. So you'll always want to have this on your pointer tool. There are lots of other ones here as well, um, but we're going to keep it on pointer tool. And then you've got a secondary one, which comes up um, whenever you hold down the command button. So you can see there, we've got this set up to a pencil tool, which is what you're going to want to set this to. So click on this, set this to pencil tool. And every time you hit alt, it'll change the pencil tool, which is great. Or if you're doing quite a lot of deleting, you can set it to an eraser tool so you can jump in and out and delete various different parts of your track. Again, there's all these different options here that you can use as well. We're going to keep it on pencil. And then just moving slightly down, we've got a, a quick add button here, which lets you, you'll notice the, the familiar screen from the start. It lets you add a new track, either audio, software, instrument, or you can, if you've got a track that you like, um, and have all the settings set up, you can use this one here to the right of that, which lets you basically duplicate everything, creates a new track with a, a duplicate setting on, on that track. And then up here, we've got the timings of our track. So we've got everything starting here at bar one. And because we're working in four, four time, and just down at the bottom here, you see four, four is our time signature. It means there's four beats to every bar and depending on what tempo you've got. So down here again, our tempo is at one, two, five. 
so we're going to have 125 beats per minute so that's how it works out the time so you'll notice in most dance music if you go back and have a listen through everything works in segments so it works off of eight bars works off 16 bars 32 bars 64 bar sections you can actually if you go back if you haven't noticed um go back and get a, a tune that you like the sound of and count out 16 bars so count out 16 um count out four beats and that's a bar so one two three four that's a bar count out 16 of those and you'll notice on uh, actually maybe even eight um at every eight and 16 bar section there'll be something happens in the track so there'll maybe be a crash there'll maybe be um, a new instrument comes in something significant happens on those parts um you'll notice a breakdown or whatever will, will never come in um well shouldn't and will traditionally come in on the sort of 16 and 32 bar sections or separated parts okay so just moving down then i'm going to minimize this okay so in the next one we're going to have a look at the track views on the left and we're going to cover the transport bar at the bottom <laughs> 